Hello and welcome to another video. In this one we're going to be talking about what a boolean trap is, uh, which is something that I point out a lot in code reviews. So uh, this is a, a common mistake and I'm going to show you a few ways to avoid it in Python, um, but this is, you know, kind of a, a language agnostic video. Like this, <laughs> this particular pattern happens in all sorts of different programming languages. But anyway, let's jump into it. Okay, so this actually got brought up on stream because I was working with ordered dicks and um, showing the different APIs that are different between ordered dict and normal dictionaries. Um, and I'm actually going to show you a snippet of code that I wrote on stream and use that to kind of frame this. <laughs> but anyway, let's start up Python. Import collections. We're going to make an ordered dictionary. Uh, DCT equals collections dot ordered dict. And we can construct this with an existing dictionary just to have it, you know, have some initial values. And if we look at this dictionary, you'll see that, you know, it's represented by a list of tuples. This isn't actually how it's exactly stored behind the scenes, but this is how you can think about it. Um, and order dict has this pop item uh, method, which is not present on normal dictionaries. And so what this is used for is popping either the beginning or last item of this. And it has a parameter, which I don't remember whether it's... <laughs> I don't remember how it works because it is a bit of a boolean trap uh, in that, you know, what does pop item true do? Does that pop the beginning or does that pop the end? Um, and if you look at the documentation, it, it does have a name, but it, you're not required to use the name to call it. So this is valid Python code and, you know, might be something that someone would write. Uh, in this case, it's true if it pops the last item, which I probably wouldn't have guessed. Um, and this is kind of the, you know, epitome of the boolean trap in that, uh, when you write a function or when you're designing an API, if you have a parameter that can take a boolean, that's often a code smell because it makes it difficult to understand the particular caller of a function. Um, because like, you know, reading reading this code, you, you might not have any idea what this function does as I did. Um, and the ways you, you can fix this from an API's perspective, there's kind of two ways that I've seen this fixed, um, or at least two ways that I would suggest fixing this. One of these, uh, let's say that we're defining our odict uh, pop item function. And this is what we have right now, last equals true. And then uh, we just do return. Oh, actually it'd be odict pop item dct last equals true. And we did return dct dot pop item last equals last. Now pretend we had our, our, our wrapper function here. And this suffers from that same problem. odict pop item dct and then, you know, true. You'll see that you know this this is hard to understand what this api is doing and the first and the very very easiest way to fix this is to make your boolean parameters named only uh, that is you will require the caller to say you know last equals true and you know if this is present you know it's really really easy to understand what's going on here so let's change this function to do that and we can do that just by putting a star argument and this empty star argument says that all the arguments after it must be used by name uh, I actually did a video on argument types, and I will link that in the description as well. Um, I go over this exact thing and talk more about it there. Um, but if we use this same function now, uh, if we were to call odict pop item dct true, we'll actually get a type error here saying that, you know, it only takes one positional argument, not the two that you gave here. And this forces the programmer to say last equals true. And in fact, if we say, you know, some other thing that's not last, you'll get a an error here saying that, you know, you used an unexpected keyword argument. Uh, so that's one way to fix this. We actually have to rebuild our dictionary because we have popped all the items from it. Um, so that's one way to fix things by using named, ol named only arguments. Another way to fix this is by using enumerations. Uh, in Python, there's the enum module, which helps you with this. And so uh, you might make a like pop position enum equals enum dot enum pop position. Of course, you could use the class syntax if you want to. I don't really use um, I don't really use <laughs> enums all that often, um, so I, I don't really play with them all that much. But here's here's an enum that you might write, uh, and from this you can get begin and or sorry, pop position dot begin and pop position dot end, and then you could write your function similar to this odict pop item, which takes your dict, and it takes a position, which is a, I guess we would say this is an ordered dict. 
you would actually use your your generic parameters here, um, but I'm I'm not going to do that. <laughs> actually, maybe we can. From typing import order dict and type var k equals type var key, and then v equals type var v, and then we would do def o dict pop item dct ordered dict k v. And then you would do pop uh, position being a pop position, pop position, and then equals to the default value, which is pop position, pop position dot end. And this returns a tuple of kv. And this would be implemented, actually we'll make this window a little bit bigger, which we usually don't do, uh, because my, my type annotations, again, this one's way more verbose. And we would say like, if pause is pop position dot end. And again, you would probably actually implement your own thing here instead of calling something else, but pop item uh, last equals true. So we need to return. Otherwise, return dct.pop item last equals false. I forgot to import double, but anyway, you could imagine this, and then you would call this like odict pop item, um, dct pop position equals end. Uh, you could also or pop position dot end. Uh, you could also say pause equals. You could make this named only as well. That would be another you know augmentation here. But this this makes it a little bit more clear that you're you're always popping at the very end. Um, instead of, you know, <laughs> the original Boolean trap they had here. But anyway, there's 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 kind of two solutions to solve this, which is named only arguments, enumerations. Um, some other ways are to build like a wrapper class that has particular named methods that enable or disable uh, particular settings. Uh, but I, you know, <laughs> that gets you into more object oriented patterns. And I think these are much simpler for solving this problem, like bringing in a, a factory pattern class to to do uh, Boolean settings a little bit, a little bit much. Uh, but anyway, here's the solution. Uh, hopefully this was helpful. If you have additional things you want me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.